Bobber's ready. Go! Travel spoken. Boss and Rob and Amber are going to do it. This is a, a business trip, as I like to say. You, Brad Culpepper. I'm tired of you and the fucking chickens. You can come with a puppet master. They can be my little puppets. It's not like you're making a deal with the devil here. You get to milk your own milk, I guess. We got enough rocks here, too. We could build a pretty decent shelter just using rocks. I'm supposed to talk you. Direct from Hobart, it's time for the Aussie Survival Podcast in Australia, dedicated to Survivor. For you today's interviews, episodes, and opinions from the greatest reality show on the planet, it's Survivor Oz, and here's your host. Hello everybody, and welcome to Survivor Oz, uh, what is it, the number one film podcast of all their own lives, the best <laughs> these episodes, um, we're here for yet another autopsy, aka uh, banging out fans or whatever we do, aka the reboot, aka Ben's not here. Um, although I haven't really read much about fan comments this, <laughs> this episode, so um, I don't know if you have, Colin, maybe you can fill me in. But yes, I just spoiled it. Uh, filling in as me, once again, it's Colin. Yeah, m- I gotta be honest, the only fan comments I've read are all positive towards me and slightly positive towards you and very negative towards Ben. <laughs> the way it's always been. <laughs> um, <laughs> I hope he hasn't been voted out yet. <laughs> well, he found a way anyway. to interview Jillian while on the island. That was really impressive. Uh, sprint sprint uh, reward. Phone reward. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Outback Cafe. <laughs> That's who his loved ones were, Dan and... <laughs> Dan Foley Dan and Julian. Julian. <laughs> uh, but we're back for an Oz Topsy. And again, on the day of the freaking episode, we're doing good. Uh, we haven't got it live yet, but, you know, we're doing we're doing all right. Um, so sorry but, about the people who enjoy it live. But we're talking about episode seven, uh, one of the most creative titles uh, in Survivor, It's Merge Time. <laughs> I wonder what's happening in this episode. Um, I didn't love this episode. Um, I I enjoyed it. I found it very much more of just the producers and the editors playing with the audience, which I think is good to keep the show fresh. Uh, I think, unfortunately, they went a bit overboard on this one. Just, I mean... I was totally convinced that we were going to tribal and even though we had that moment with everybody sharing their injuries at the challenge, I thought that was just going to be set up for later on. Uh, but when you add everything up together, you know, Neil's idol and all the strategizing, I mean, I think the unfortunate thing is that it left the end of the episode being pretty disappointing. So, um, I'm, I'm pretty sure this is one of those episodes that on a rewatch is not going to be one you really look forward to watching, but I can at least say it was unpredictable for one week. Uh, yeah, this episode was maybe the most unpredictable one so far, because I was not seeing that elimination, and, uh, again, maybe I'm just dumb, but we'll get into that. Um, we'll get into you being dumb? Yeah. <laughs> well, that's every episode, um. <laughs> Well, I am the Ben now. So yeah, that's right. <laughs> you have to fill live the up to my <laughs> reputation. Uh, which means if you're the Noah, you've got to, of course, be absolutely beautiful and hilarious and witty, of course, Colin. Um, but, well, I thought some uh, other things, but I'll leave that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think the listeners were uh, thinking other things there. But, uh, I saw your Skype comment. Yeah. Just saying, Colin, don't, don't hide from it. <laughs> <laughs> we'll leave that up to the imagination yeah. of the listeners. But, um, yeah, you were right. It's very Sam Mundell sir esque And, um, geez, I really am tired. I just about nearly said Nirvana. I meant token sheets. <laughs> I am just out of it tonight. <laughs> Uh, I don't know what Survivor Nirvana is, um, but Token Sheens as well, wasn't that the merge one with Joe Dowdle? Yeah. I think that was the merge episode, right? Um, I think it was right before, well, it happened before the merge, I think. Like, merge episodes. <laughs> Survivor they, experts on yeah, Survivor they merged. <laughs> But it was the traditional merge episode where yes. he was evacuated. Um, 
So, yeah, kind of left on a cliffhanger. But I feel like in something like San Juan del Sur with the jewelry quit, it still was kind of got you pumped up because it was like it set up this big battle of Josh versus Jeremy. Who will dominate the rest of the game? We're going head to head and next week's going to be epic. And then it was Josh out, mm. followed by Jeremy. But uh, which is what one thing I love about San Juan del Sur, how they built that up and then they went out one by one. But that really left with like a cliffhanger. This cliffhanger was Neil didn't give me the idol. Oh. It's not fair. <laughs> um a lot of whinging from Aubrey, though, uh, this episode, but probably justified whinging, like uh, the thing that happened with Joe and that. But again, I feel like uh, we had that one episode where we were just talking on and on about Aubrey, how she's a nothing on this season. <laughs> the Survivor gods are just spiting us because she has been one of the main characters for the past two weeks. Mm-hmm. Um, so a lot to get into with Aubrey, one of the main talking points. And Nick! <laughs> Why is there so much Nick? What, what has happened to the world? It's really unusual. I think, again, this is one of the few issues. And I'll enjoy the season, but one of the few issues I have is that the handling of the cast is just so unusual. I think too many people are getting just way too negative of an edit. Not as bad as Worlds Apart, but still way more negative than we're used to. And too many people were getting this invisible edit. And now here we are at the merge where you're supposed to be really excited to see the game move forward. And the merge episode's always, I would argue, the biggest episode of the season, even over a finale as far as strategy goes. And we're being treated mostly to people that we've never heard from before. So it's really hard to get a read on what's going to happen. And again, it didn't help any matters as far as predicting what was going to happen in this episode. Not that I want to predict, but... There's unpredictable where, oh, that was a nice surprise, and then there's unpredictable, and then, well, that was just kind of a strange episode, and that's where this category was. And Nick definitely contributed to that, because we could hear him talk for an entire episode about strategy, but if we've never heard him speak before, we don't know where he's coming from, and we don't know where where did this, you know, Michelle was my closest ally in the game come from. Yeah. <laughs> the only time they ever spoke, he was being condescending, and she was like, yeah, I don't like Nick. Like, I don't get it. Yeah, um, just side note, I realise my speech shouting has returned. Nick! Uh, that happens when I'm quite tired and have had a long day and I start speech shouting. Uh, where did Nick come from? What is this? On a positive note, um, if anybody has something to do, we'll be done this episode in about 17 minutes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but it, it's a good point. Uh, that was one thing I was going to bring up, and... This season, it's not a huge deal because it is easy to eventually just pick it up, but it, it's kind of having information that's left out of the story. Mm-hmm. Like, episode three, it was Debbie and Joe are a partnership. Uh, Liz and Peter are the strongest partnership ever, and Neil and Aubrey are a partnership. And we didn't really get any of that or a minimal of that in episode one and two. And then this week, it's Michelle is my strongest ally, and we saw them <laughs> strategizing, but... All we had was her basically saying, oh, don't tell me what to do, bro. Um, and even stranger, so we saw nothing with Julia and Michelle. And we were led to believe that that was yeah. this unbreakable, not them specifically. I mean, I always kind of believed it was Anna that held them together. But even still, all the show told us was that they were unbreakable. And these things are just sort of dropped. Yeah, because that was one of the major storylines of the first six episodes. And I felt like there was no payoff because... They built that up for the first, what was it, four episodes. And then there was that really kind of unique thing where Julia went to one tribe and Anna and Michelle went to other tribes. It's like, oh no, the main alliance has been split up. Mm -hmm. And there's really been no payoff, but it was a crammed episode so that we may get some of that next episode because I think it's safe to assume that Julia and Michelle are in an alliance uh, still because we kind of saw that. Um... But yeah, I was thinking that. Where, where are we going to get at least one scene? We didn't even hear from Julia this episode. Um, Julia's not the winner. <laughs> we'll get into some of the winners. Uh, just because she's been positive does not mean she's the winner. Just because they show people in a good light. Just, all right, I'm not going to rage. <laughs> I, I do want to say something. Like, you mentioned how it was such a packed episode. And that may be one of the other things about it is that I, I felt like I couldn't keep up because 
there was so much yeah. going on and again there's ways of handling that in an episode and then there's ways where it's almost this was like a montage of Debbie's making alliance with this person. Okay, now Nick's making alliance with this person. Okay, now the brains want to take out the brawn. Now the brawn wants to work with the beauty. Now the beauty doesn't want to work with the brawn. And it was like, it was so out there and so hard to follow because there was so much going on. And I don't think it was a situation where, whoa, we had too much footage that we have to cram into this episode. Because honestly, by the time the medevac situation even came up, that would have been about the time of tribal. And I still was having a hard time even remembering, okay, who's with who right now. Um, maybe that's just a, a way to set up, you know, in retrospect, we might look back at the end of the season and be like, oh, they wanted us to be confused because the game was never really settled until two or three episodes into the merge. But it was just, it was impossible to keep up with. There was so much going on. I think part of that could be because it was uh, a medivac and like they didn't have the tribal so they just built up seeds of what might come in the future and just crammed it with strategy um because something like aubrey (laughs) we'll get into aubrey but that would have just been hilarious if she was the merge boot uh we talked about that last week um (laughs) and she was close to being the merge boot um yeah but like that would have been so less obvious had it actually been a tribal so we do have to take into account that the medivac kind of screwed up a lot of the stuff here, um, which is a potential reason for why it seems so packed. Um, but I don't know. I, again, I don't want to be too negative, but seven episodes in, and I'd be interested to hear your opinion on this, but I am really enjoying this season. I don't have a lot of... Ne- like, we always do focus on things that didn't work in the episode, things that did work, but... I don't know about this cast. Um, mm-hmm. I think they had a potential. And again, I, I really am enjoying... Maybe I'm enjoying these seven more than I enjoyed the first seven episodes of Second Chance. I'm not sure. Um, definitely more than the f- first seven episodes of Worlds Apart. Um, <laughs> but I don't know. There are some great characters, and there's a lot of people on here that I could see on another season and stuff like that. But then... I know people, they have their fans, but... And again, I need to reiterate, I don't dislike anyone. There's no one, get them out, I can't stand them. But Nick had 11 confessionals this week, and I just don't find him an interesting character mm-hmm. at all, really. Um, Julia, Michelle, Michelle has a huge fan base. And again, like maybe she'll go on to be a massive player, but I just don't find her that interesting as a character. Uh, Joe, when he's not being grouchy, he's just boring, Joe. Um, even Neil, who we'll talk more in depth with, about Neil. Um, it's just, again, I'm enjoying this season, but at least half this cast I just really can't get into for some reason. You know, I had the same problem with Caleb back at the beginning of the season, and at least in terms of Neil, I have to wonder if they intentionally held back uh, from showing too much of them because they were going to be medevac and it was anticlimactic. But at the same time, I just yeah, I find it hard hard. to believe that they would want to avoid somebody who's a good personality in any way. Uh, it's it's kind of an interesting season because I feel like in a way I'm a little bit more... I'm, I'm less critical on the season because we are coming off of Worlds Apart. I think I would really <laughs> compare this to Worlds Apart and Second Chances. Is you compare an all-star season to an all-star season for a new player season coming off of Worlds Apart, I think I'm less critical of the game itself here. Um, but because the Worlds Apart cast overall just left such a negative impression for you know, a lot of reasons, um, I find like I'm probably a little bit more critical of this cast. Uh, but the other thing is that I feel like I'm constantly comparing this to the first Brains, Brawn, Beauty. And they just... It, it was such an unusual group of people they picked and it doesn't quite fit the way the first one did and yeah I mean we're, we're not getting the negativity of Worlds Apart with these people but we're just not getting big personalities and I think good examples of that would be people like Neil and Aubrey who if you go back and watch which I have gone back to watch since it started the preseason stuff they seem like they'd be big characters. You could see why they would have been picked. Yeah. You'd see why they'd be exciting to watch on TV. And 
I he's think... got ice cream pants. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Guy with crazy hair and ice cream pants, who doesn't want him on TV? But <laughs> this might be a situation like Guatemala, where the conditions are just so harsh that yeah. it's affecting the people. And I really hope that this week may be a turning point. You know, we, we have a lot of people who are going to be on... People are on antibiotics. People are like, okay, you're healing, okay. Maybe just their minds are going to be put at ease now that they've all been attended to. And we're not going to have these stressed out Aubrey's and stressed out Neil's. And uh, I don't know what you can consider, Nick. Maybe we'll actually start to get some personality of these people now that they're being attended to. Yeah, and I hope people don't misunderstand me finding these people not interesting, meaning every character has to be like Philip Shepard or oh, something. Yeah. That's not what I'm saying, but... I just, yeah, there's something, and again, I don't dislike the season, and the characters who are good, like, uh, Debbie, of course, is amazing, Ty is great, and Ty is much better now that they're showing less of him, mm -hmm. like, they sh it got a bit overboard around the third episode, but now they only give us a little bit of Ty each week, so he's better that way, um, some of the pre-mergers, I'm not going to go into them, but they were really interesting, or unique characters, um, a lot of people will hate me for saying this, but I think Jason is an intriguing character to watch. Doesn't mean I love Jason, but I think he adds to the season. Uh, Scott. Um, so at least half this cast is really strong in my eyes. Um, but yeah, I asked this question to you a few weeks ago because people were really loving on Alicia. And then a lot of people the week after said, eh, we didn't really miss her, even though we did mm -hmm. love her in the first four. I know I'm biased. I know that I'm going to be biased. But I think we miss Peter this episode. I think he brought a lot to the season. I'd love to get your opinion. Yeah, uh, this is where it actually helps coming right off of Second Chances, because I felt the same way about Abby Maria. And the funny thing is I wasn't that big of an Abby Maria fan off of her first appearance in Philippines. But there was something that she brought to last season, which was just this walking disaster. Um, <laughs> the, the the unpredictability of what she's going to do or how bad she's going to screw things up. And I think when you go into a merge, you really need certain types of characters to stay intrigued. You no need those characters that you can root for. You need these characters you can root against. And then you also need these characters that just make you nervous about what they're going to do next. Abby Maria brought that, and that's what Peter would have been this year. The guy who just goes in there, and no matter what he does, he's probably going to screw something up, either for himself or somebody else. And we don't have anybody else like that on here. Like It's it's unfortunate that if you look at the whole cast here, you could either say, well, they're either winning or they're not winning. There's nobody where it's like, okay, this is a good goat. You know, This is somebody who's going to screw some people yeah. over. I mean, we don't even know where the alliances stand right now, and we certainly don't have a character like Peter that's going to screw things up in the game. So I was definitely feeling his absence this week. Just imagine some of the chaos in this episode had, like, oh, we don't know if Peter's in the brains. Is he with the beauties, the bronze? Who's he going with? No one wants to work with him. Yeah. <laughs> oh, damn it. He won the challenge. Who are we going to get out now? Like, there's just so much potential there. Um, so I don't know. Maybe I'm just biased because well, I really enjoyed him. There's also this weird thing going on where we have a few people who are saying, yeah, this person rubs me the wrong way. You know, Ty's talked about uh, people rubbing him the wrong way. Uh, Peter, obviously. Jason's has the a mango people. tree. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, but that's the other problem is that when you do hit a merge, the other thing you're really looking for is, oh, I can't wait to see these people play together and you're never really looking for, oh, I want to see these people team up. You want to see people go head to head. And I can't think of anybody even leading into the next episode, you know, taking the real preview of next episode out of it. I can't see anybody actually butting heads. And there's just people are a little bit too passive right now. And I'm pretty sure that the season will turn around at some point. But it's just the last two weeks has been that weird period where you're having these new people interacting because of the tribe swap and the merge. And everybody's just being a little bit too nice, I think. Yeah, maybe Jason will be that one who turns it around um, well, I hope and that, another Alicia will emerge. Like, if you look back at another season that we could compare this to, Guatemala, and again, maybe the reason why these people aren't being as confrontational is just 
they're so worn down by everything else. And if you look back at Guatemala, you had another character like that, Jamie, who should have had people screaming at him day and night, and everybody just always bit their tongue until they just voted him out. And that was the thing that I really missed in Guatemala, is that you had these absurd characters like Judd and Jamie that should have gotten a bigger reaction out of the people. And you want a person like Cass that's just going to drive somebody up the wall or Abby Maria. And I think we really need that from somebody. So Jason, not that, I'm saying this as if Jason, Jason, if you're listening, I want you to change something for next week. Um, <laughs> you have a lot of control over what you did a year ago. <laughs> but I want Jason to be that guy because you said, you know, Jason's a memorable character, even if it's not that you like him. I'm exactly there. I Every time Jason comes up the screen, I'm like, oh, I can't stand this guy, but I just want to see more of him for some reason. And I want him to just get in people's faces. So maybe what we're seeing next week with Sydney, his own ally, we're going to get like a fight. Oh, yeah. I, just, I want to drop the clothes like, fight! Just scream it when you're watching the episode. <laughs> um, and I haven't read much of the fan reaction, so this isn't uh, uh, here I am referencing talking about the fans. I'm not allowed to do that. Which, I'm sorry. Let's, let's just say, just, just for old time's sake, uh, the, the fans, I just don't get what they're saying about this. Let's just get the regular yeah. reactions out of the way because we got some good feedback <laughs> last week about how people really love that. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> that love feedback. Um, I haven't read the fan reactions, but I imagine a lot of people were getting up in arms about the shoving geeks in lockers. Yeah. <laughs> but I was laughing, so I thought that was great. We're just shoving geeks in lockers. <laughs> I thought that was a really good... Again, he's not one of my favourites, but I I, I'm, I think he adds to the season. Um, and I think I, I would be I I wouldn't mind a few more weeks of Jason. Um, but yeah, again, and yeah, we want more confrontation. It doesn't even mean fights every week. Like we don't need to see Kimmy versus Alicia every yeah. week, but just that wild card. Like mm-hmm. Abby Maria wasn't always fighting, but she was always the wild card. Like you, Abby could flip her vote, she could do this, you say one bad word, and she's off with someone else. Um, so just to have a wild card at least in there. Um, and who knows, there may be, because no one expected Cass to be the wild card until that merge yeah. episode. So new players can still emerge. After, uh, emerge. <laughs> um, that's a Ben line. I am the in the Ben role. Um, you know, if we had half of Ben's skills, we would have inserted some laughter in there as a sound effect. But... <laughs> <laughs> but we're not technical as te- technologically advanced. Um, we should talk briefly about the pre-merge. Um, did the le- edit the letter? Did the <laughs> edit lie to us? Um, because all this speculation between us on the podcast and fans on online things, there was this talk of was Aubrey's move a good move or a bad move. But I don't think a single person considered the fact that Scott and those people would be angry at Aubrey. Yeah. I, everyone assumed, oh, they're going to have her because she crossed her name out. But it seems like maybe everyone was talking about voting Peter off. I was kind of like, did, were we completely lied to last week? Yeah, I mean, I think when we were watching, we definitely commented that it was strange that that Scott and Julia and Ty group, that they had no interest in working with Peter. Um, And Aubrey was wishy-washy, which is kind of, that's what made it even a little bit more unusual because all we really heard from them was them saying, well, I don't think Aubrey wants to go with us. But then based on this week, it seems like they were under the impression Aubrey was always going with them. And uh, I still stand by, I want to talk about the, the whole crossing the thing off because do we know for sure that if they change something, they can get a new parchment, or are they stuck with the one they have? I think there must have been a time in Survivor history, and I don't know for sure, but 442, well, like 480 contestants, uh, like how many tribal councils, how many votes, <laughs> surely someone's made a mistake and asked for a new parchment. And there is a whole stack of parchments there, surely. Yeah. Uh, now, even if there wasn't, this is the other thing, and this is where I'm really leaning towards Aubrey playing a really bad game. Because I think I mentioned last week briefly that her crossing the name out was kind of just sending a message in case Joe took it the wrong way. And that's the thing that completely backfired 
because in all honesty, if you do write something down, you can cross it out however you want. You can cross it completely off. Let's say you don't get another parchment. You scribble the entire thing out so it's not visible. It, it, out. it was like she intentionally meant to do that. And I don't see any other way around. I would love somebody to explain how if she really wants to cross a name off, she's going to be burning a bridge with Julia. If, you know, she puts it up there. She was intentionally putting it that way. And it really backfired. And I love the, the comment that Scott had. It's like, next time we go to Tribal, I'm going to write it. Aubrey, cross it off. <laughs> Joe, cross it off. <laughs> That's up there for one of the best confessionals of the season so far. Yeah, hands down. But yeah, it is it is strange because I think we speculated last week that Aubrey wasn't necessarily making the best move the way that she handled Not that the move was bad. Voting Peter out was probably the right decision. But the way that she handled it in every area was bad so now we can look at it and we can say it was really dumb of her to kind of just sort of brush it off when they approached her about it and not even entertained it them i talked about that with billy this past week that when somebody approaches you with a plan even if you don't agree with it humor them for a second don't just be like yeah i'll keep it in mind and then walk away and then it's a bad move to to flip on joe and to not make a decision with him and then it's a bad move to do the crossing out the name it's just it was one bad move after the other, and I think, if anything, that's what put the target on her this week. I like, um, just to backtrack, I like the idea that they're only ever allowed one parchment done, <laughs> and finally, Bye Bye Denver Diva makes sense. I was going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like, it, it, Clay was there, and he wrote Bye Bye Denver Diva. It's like, oh, I don't think Jeff's going to understand this. And one of the producers like, Jeff no. will get mad at me. No, you know what? We only have four of these, so you're stuck with it, okay? You deal with Jeff and his consequences. <laughs> yeah, I want to see those uh, behind-the-scenes footage. Um, or maybe they did back in the early seasons, but now the budget's been cut, um, <laughs> but they have to film seasons back-to-back. -back. They've only got limited amounts of paper. <laughs> I don't know. Um, yeah, what if she just wrote so... it too big, and she didn't have anywhere to write a smaller name? So she's <laughs> sitting there writing, it's like, excuse Forced. me! She's yelling back, excuse me, Jeff, I wrote the wrong <laughs> name! Can I just tell them who I'm voting for? <laughs> Yeah, I want to see all. We need the DVDs. Really need to have more behind the scenes footage of parchment voting conundrum. Um, you would just have like but... we had the Dan Foley raw footage. Every finale, we just need raw footage of these one questionable moments. <laughs> what happened here when she crossed out the name? <laughs> you have to imagine, and we're really going in depth conversation. Here, but, uh, Survivor brings the big topics. Um, but you have to imagine at least once a season someone really screws up on the voting punishment mm -hmm. or something. Um, but, uh, yeah, Sue Hawk would have needed, like, 100 <laughs> bits of paper. Um, and it's kind of funny that they d don't... Oh, uh, let's, let's not have an in-depth conversation about voting parchment. Um, there's a lot to talk about here. Uh, but, yeah, I was fascinated because it did seem like the edit lied to us, but that's totally understandable because... They had to mask the Peter vote, and they had to build a narrative out of this cross-out vote rather than it just being a random cross-out thing. Um, so I totally get it. But then this episode, it seemed like that. It's just I don't think anyone was expecting that response from Scott. Everyone was championing Aubrey, or if they weren't, they were saying more things like, Joe's not going to trust her, mm -hmm. but not Scott's not going to trust yeah. her. Yeah. Um, yeah, we didn't I, really get Joe's thing. I, I was definitely thrown off um, this week, and you can go back and you know listen to last week's episodes. You can read the power rankings, and I don't think anybody was predicting that Aubrey would be the one that came out of this with the most heat. I mean, Joe came out of it unscathed. That's what's really funny. There was the one comment by Scott, but <laughs> we hit the merge, and nobody mentioned Joe's name. I mean, a, you could say, well, he's not a physical threat. Joe's a bigger physical threat than Aubrey at this point, and, and Joe doesn't even get considered. It's kind of unusual. I love Joe's. I think it was his only confessional. Maybe he had two, but Ty loves that chicken. He loves that chicken <laughs> more than he loves us. <laughs> Grouchy Joe's back. Can we just had a scene yeah. with Ty sneaking a kiss on the chicken. <laughs> he just he needs somebody to replace Caleb now. Hashtag stolen kiss. Yeah. <laughs> Hashtag poultry kiss or something like that. Um, but, yeah, so that was pretty much all of the pre-merge. And then we had the scene... 
Neil, and I don't know when this scene was filmed. It probably wasn't live like that day. It was probably a few days earlier. I'm not sure. But Neil walking around with the idol in his pocket? <laughs> Well, let's just start off by saying Sydney can recognize uh, a crotch bulge the second bulge. she sees it. <laughs> she can decipher exactly what it is. Um, you know, this the honest truth is when I was watching this, uh, my wife, Jamie, she turned to me and she's like, what's the idiot still carrying it around for? But when you say that, it actually makes sense. That was probably when he just came back from finding it because why else would he just have it in his pockets? You don't need to do that. Like, aren't these people able to... You know, they're either put in their bag or they can bury it somewhere, but there's no need to be carrying it on you. So that scene probably was from when he first came back, but it made him look really stupid, which is another reason why his whole medevac is strange, because it seems like they're going out of their way to make these medevacs look more positive. You know, with Caleb, even though we saw nothing of him in the game, it was like he had the little you know, blurb at the end saying, Caleb is ready to return to the game. And this one moment, which... Other than Neil finding the idol is the only moment he had in the entire series made him look really stupid. Yeah, we could say he was just getting back, but then also it made it look like he was just out hunting crabs. So it's kind of, again, you never know with the edit, but if he really was walking around, that is very confusing as to why he would do that. And maybe he just never got a chance and didn't want to risk having it in his bag. Um... But only, if only this worked as well enough for Rupert, um, whether he wasn't even having an idol. Uh, not Dr. Rupert, we'll get to him. <laughs> well, but, but... Uh, sorry, just another thing to add. It also seems strange to me that, you know, even when there's really strong suspicions of somebody having an idol, they have something really good and solid to base it on. It's always, we're pretty sure this person has an idol. There was no doubt in anybody's mind that Neil had an idol. And maybe it wasn't just the pocket bulge that gave it away. Maybe they had something else and we just didn't see it on the show. But either way, Neil has probably gone down in history now as the worst at hiding an idol. Because there was absolutely no question on anybody's part. They just want to, Neil has an idol. Neil has an idol. It's just, did he, I don't know. he give it away? I think Val was pretty bad at hiding her two eyes. <laughs> Everyone knew she had two. She wanted them to know. That's the difference. If Neil came out there, it's like, everybody, I found two idols. And they're like, okay, we know there's not two. We watched Val. He has an idol. <laughs> um, that's a good question, though. Um, if he's the worst. Because some people... I imagine, I can't think of a specific example right now, but they found it in their bag and stuff like mm -hmm. that, which is pretty dumb, but it's not the worst thing if it's rolled up in your trousers and hidden away. Um, but, yeah, just walking around with hunting crabs, again, we don't know the timeline or the edit, but that is pretty dumb. Um, I said last week, uh, I bet the producers are kind of upset that Neil found the idol. Uh, <laughs> that was... That was what I said last week. This week, I bet they're furious that yeah. Neil found the idol uh, and didn't give it away. So now, and they love idols, so now they've only got two idols in the game. Uh, which is just... Uh, like, A, Neil found it, who, let's face it, isn't the most interesting character. Um, and then, B, he gets medivac mm -hmm. <laughs> with the idol with you, Spock. And I can't imagine them rehiding another one until the other two have been played. Um, but we, we'll get into the merge. But one thing that confused me, uh, that was before the merge. So Jason didn't know about Ty and Scott. Why wouldn't Jason want to work with Neil f for the new Power Rangers type idol thing? Why wouldn't who want to work with who? I missed that. Well, because this was before the merge, mm -hmm. uh, of course we had Ty and Scott. Oh, right. But if Neil has an idol, yin-yang, you put them together, mm -hmm. why wouldn't he want to work with that? Um, there must have been... Uh, I mean, it could have had a lot to do with... you know, We didn't see Scott saying... Or we saw him say, I'm going to take out the brains one by one. It's not like he was declaring... He was declaring war more on Aubrey than anybody else, but it might have a lot to do with the fact that this episode was, okay, it's going to be brains versus brawn. Um, and he didn't want to necessarily work with it, but it, it may have been in his best intention or best interests to do it. I would think because he has Ty on one side, he has Jason on the other. Anybody who has an idol is valuable at this point, and Scott could have been that guy. I think that found a way to get close to Neil 
and then he has another option. So let's say one day Ty just goes nuts and he plays his idol and that's out of the picture. There's still another one out there. So I don't know. The thing is, is that they weren't even looking to eliminate Neil this week. They said Neil has an idol, so we're going to vote out Aubrey because they won't yeah. see that coming, which works on several levels. It works because, you know, if Neil plays his idol, then, well, you, you're you still safe. You have somebody else voted out. It works because Neil is never going to think they're going to vote out somebody else if they think I have an idol. And then it also kept the idol in the game, maybe. So maybe Scott did intend to, somewhere down the road, have that as an option. You know, you vote out Neil's biggest ally, and then he's up for grabs. But, I mean, we didn't see anything setting that up. That's complete, you know, fan fiction at this point on my part. It's just, yeah, um, maybe they thought, maybe Neil, like, we'll hear it later on in exit interviews and that he was really sketchy or something like that. Um, but, like, on the old gondol, I think it was got no Chanlo, sorry. Like I don't know, maybe they could have worked with it, but it's also not a bad idea to get rid of an idol as well. That's not the worst. Mm-hmm. Like, w- w- yeah. Um, but uh, we'll, we'll just jump all over the place because there's no real chron- chron- chronological way we can talk about this merge, really. But um, while we're on the topic of idols, uh, I was kind of flabbergasted that Scott. That was just outing Ty's idol mm-hmm. to Nick, who he's met, like, what? This was still the first day, so <laughs> met literally hours beforehand. And said, don't tell Sydney, which is another interesting thing, which I don't... Yeah, Sydney m- doesn't know. Well, she may know, and we just haven't yeah, seen it. Yeah, that's but... the other thing I'm speculating, that maybe they're... Like, it's weird. This is where we could have done with a little bit more character building, even just on Nick's part, uh, because... It comes completely out of nowhere. And, of course, you have to figure a lot of them telling him may be, okay, well, we need to make sure that he knows we're taking this seriously. If you just approach somebody and say, hey, let's be an alliance, the way that Debbie does, (laughs) which there's somebody who took a bit of a hit this week. But if you just do that, well, there's no reason for the person to believe you. By you saying, oh, yeah, this is the whole information on the idols, you're a little bit more likely to get that person on board. But... It's not like it's not like there was any pre-existing relationship with Nick. Even Nick was like, "Yeah, like they just sort of threw this out there, and I don't know if I want to work with them." It's just it's another one of those areas where I think when you hit the merge, people just sort of jump the gun and they they do things a little bit too quickly without thinking, and that's probably what they did. Because I I don't think based on this week, which again we only have one episode to base Nick on. But based on what we've seen of Nick this week, I don't see any way that Nick intends to work with these guys to the end. Is it just me, or did this episode right across the board, not one tribe or anything in specific, A, have a lot of bad gameplay, and B, a lot of negativity, not in terms of worlds apart type, quote, bullying, but people being portrayed as negative, and not just one or two people seem like a lot of bad gameplay and a lot of negativity mm-hmm. between in people's edits. Well, I mean, we've speculated a lot throughout the season, and a lot of fans have speculated about, well, this is the winner because they haven't received a negative edit. And I think you brought up last week or the week before, everybody receives a negative edit on some aspect because that is how you fool the audience. Um, after this week, I say it's completely up in the air because Debbie, who looked like a runaway winner for this thing, now looks like the biggest loser in the game off this episode she's just making alliance with every which we talked about that last week you know about i was saying how nick was actually right when he was not right in being condescending to michelle but right in what he was saying to her saying don't just jump just because debbie says i want to make an alliance with you and we said debbie's making alliance with everybody but debbie still looked smart last week and this week it was just it's just the subtlest change in how they're portraying it Instead of her just saying, I want to make an alliance with you, now we're getting one person responding saying, so she just came out of nowhere and said, we're in an alliance. (laughs) Which is so funny. She didn't really give Ty a choice at all. No, she did. Uh, Ty, I really like you. I think we need to be in an alliance. You cool with that? Uh, Yeah, okay, all right. She was using the Joe Del Campo tactic. (laughs) I need an answer right now. If you hesitate, I know you're against me. (laughs) But yeah, it's it's Uh, so weird that... Debbie just went from winner to loser, and it was she didn't even do anything different in her game. It was just 
that little subtle way that they showed somebody responding to her this week. It was the same thing with Scott. Scott looked brilliant in the last few weeks. Now suddenly, oh, well, Scott's just kind of, you know, approaching me and assuming that we're working together, and I don't like Scott. It's, this episode didn't do anybody favors, and I I'm, I think it's odd to watch this week, but this might be the moment where we look back at the end of the season. We're like, I'm glad they put that in there because I didn't see the winner coming. I think just on the Debbie thing, because that's obviously a talking point, um, what's even more fascinating is the comparison. It wasn't like we saw a different aspect of Debbie and we're judging two different types of gameplay. Two weeks ago, we specifically saw her recruiting Sydney into an alliance, and we they went to the extra mm-hmm. effort of showing her, like, kind of flirting with Sydney and buttering her up and saying, oh, you're so smart, Sydney, and I want a woman to win. They went that extra effort to show how good Debbie is getting people's trust. Mm-hmm. And then even with Michelle last week, and you talk about Nick uh, telling her not to trust everyone, and then this week they showed the exact same thing of Debbie trying to get people into alliances, and yet it was so completely different that it just baffles me. Mm-hmm. This is, you know, we complain about how Nick, it's so confusing to just have him out of nowhere being the guy that, you know, everything is about. But at the same time, I think that Nick is the only person in this episode who actually had a positive edit in terms of his game, uh, which is what made the episode more confusing. And yeah, I mean, everything sort of came out of nowhere uh, with the Debbie thing and uh, the thing that I actually want to talk about more than anything is Aubrey because le- we can go back a couple of weeks here and look at the well we we brought up last week but let's just read it. you received a comment which you know, kind of went on for a while during the power rankings where you said I predict a merge boot for Aubrey and I- a merge boot, yeah. But even if you hadn't said a merge boot, several people were adamant, no, she can't be a merge boot, you know, for these reasons. Aubrey was set up as the merge boot this week, and it would have been believable, you know? And on top of that, I think the argument that, well, it can't be a big character, um, I don't think that's the case. I mean, if you look at half of the merge boots, who was Eric? Like, Eric? Seriously? <laughs> Eric Cardona, like he was a major merge boot. Let's just cover that right now. This is this isn't criticize the fans. Uh, this is the autopsy after all. But it is. Let's look back and say you might have been onto something because Aubrey all of a sudden is a clear merge boot, a merge boot, as you said. Um, it's just you can say the what ifs if that didn't happen, but it was Aubrey going home tonight, unless they did some cool idol. Mm-hmm. movie or something um she is a talking point but i'm just so confused about aubrey because on one hand i want to say to people yeah you were right i'm dumb when we had that big rant about aubrey she is a late bloomer but she has has been getting a lot of kind of not positive things but kind of things like yes i can do this i need to rebound and i need to do this and that But then at the same time, there's some been some really bad gameplay, and maybe Aubrey is just being set up as next week she's going. Mm -hmm. Well, that's Um, like the impression I got from her was like watching Marquesas. Once John Carroll's gone, Tammy's the next target, and that's all there is to it. And she's she's receiving the Tammy edit here. Let's let's not get into your hashtag Tammy Tammy was robbed robbed. (laughs) because then we're gonna do hashtag uh, hashtag Aubrey was robbed, and I know you'll love that, but. This just to me feels like John Carroll and Tammy all over again. And the way that she's being portrayed now is setting up, okay, if she's not gone, it's going to be just because she wins immunity and she is always going to be the next choice of everybody to go. Yeah, I will say, look, if she wins, I see it more than I did a few weeks ago because there has been a spike in her edit. But really? I, I, just... <laughs> I see it less well... than I did a few weeks ago. Oh, really? Yeah. I, the only reason I say that is because she has been getting a lot of airtime lately. Um, and maybe it's going to be like a Natalie Anderson thing. But if she di- does win... Well, I'm conflicted. Is she getting 
lots of airtime because she is going to be a big character. That doesn't, I'm not saying she's going to win, but it means maybe she's going to make it to the final episode, go out fourth like Kelly Wentworth or something. Um, is she getting that edit because she's going to be a big character, or is it because she is game body and she's very good at explaining strategy, and this was like a 90% strategy episode? I actually am going with the third option here, which is that we know once you get past the merge, the merge is always such a good episode, and then you always have a few of those post-merge episodes that are just, you're either dealing with a vote that is so predictable that there's nothing exciting in the episode, or a person that's so insignificant that the audience doesn't care, and I think that they always try to work hard to build up a few people so that when they do go, it's a bigger deal than it should have been, and I think that's all it is with Aubrey's screen time. I'm almost positive that she'll be gone within the next two weeks and this is just the amount of screen time is just let's make sure that when she does go that it's a talking point i call it the reed effect reed (laughs) yeah reed out of nowhere a lot of people forget that reed was one of the most invisible survivors ever in the prima maybe more invisible than purple kelly like let's be honest if you go back completely invisible yeah, people forget that because that exact thing that you just said, uh, the read effect happened where the last few episodes, they gave him a lot of airtime. So when he was voted out, it was more of an impact. Mm-hmm. Um, although the read effect didn't really seem to affect Wes or Alec. Yeah. <laughs> well, like I said, you're always going to be stuck with those characters. And at this point, we're already looking at you know potentially Michelle, which you know, before we go, I'll have a quick thing to say on Michelle. Oh, um <laughs> I know Kristen's going to... Kristen's a huge Michelle fan, so maybe we can get her on the really? Oz show this week. She's a huge fan of Julia and Michelle. I don't know why. Uh, we'll get her on to explain her reasoning uh, for that. But uh, I'll be listening to that one. Her yeah, debut. Yeah, her debut on Survivor for the season. <laughs> but, uh, no, I mean, I think we have those characters where it is going to be the, the Wes or the Alec, where you, you could look at... I mean, as big as some of Joe's moments have been, you brought it up. You're like, Joe, most of the time, is just boring, half-asleep Joe, you know? And Michelle is another one. And I think we have those characters. And they really just, at this point, are building up the people who let's justify why they're left and let's make sure that those are major characters. Although, in fairness to this season, though, the editing spread across the board has been a lot better than some of the more recent oh, seasons yeah. like. If you think of Kagi Yarn, like, that was very, like, Tony, Cass, and Spencer. Like, there were some episodes, I remember there was an episode in Kagi Yarn Merge where I don't, I think not even half the people got a confessional, and this was in the Merge. It was just all Tony and Spencer. Yeah, I mean, um, all of a sudden Morgan was just called out for sleeping too much, and that's the only thing we knew about her post-Merge. Yeah, so it's not... Not, like, to totally shit on this season, because I think the editing this season has been one of the best in terms of more old school and spread out. Yeah. But the, you're always going to have those invisible... Well, not even invisible characters, but just the lesser characters. Um, but I can totally see the read effect coming into play with... Some, like, I also say uh, Tyler Fredrickson is uh, an example of mm-hmm. the read effect. Um, and even people forget this as well. Even Joe Anglum in World to Part is an example of the yeah. Reed effect. Uh, I think people forget that he was not the most prominent character in the pre-merge of that. He had, I don't think he... Well, he had the one episode uh, which wasn't so much about him. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but, but like the... Um, uh, oh, who was the crazy guy? Now I'm blanking. Mr. Stalker. Vince. Vince. Yes, I love Vince. Dad. Oh, Dad. Bill, yeah, just, my, just run down the Rodney. very long list. <laughs> um but yeah, the Vince boot. But he, if you actually look back, it was everybody else talking about Joe in that episode. Joe did nothing other than just sort of stand there. Uh, Joe had the big moment with the Vince thing, which he wasn't really even part of. And then his final episode was setting him up. And his entire fan base seems based on just those two episodes. So yeah, we have lots of characters like this where it's just out of nowhere. Okay, well here, we're going to explain why they're booted and they're going to be a big character from one week. And I think that's what Survivor fans are kind of latching on to right now. I don't even know if it's one week. I would say, argue, the read effect is like what Aubrey's potentially happening, mm-hmm. where it's more of a build-up 
but like it's a sudden spike like three weeks or two weeks before they go um and then they go like not even just their one boot episode which would explain if aubrey does go home next week that would be an example of it um and i call it the reed effect i'm sure like that's season 29 there's plenty of situations where it's similar things have happened um but yeah, that's why I was... Oh, this is a completely off-topic. But I was actually surprised that Joe was on the ballot for the season. I didn't even think he was, like, a big character. And maybe I wasn't reading the online stuff as much in season 30. But, yeah, it's just kind of funny that people forget, like, because he was such a massive character in Second Chance. Um, anyway, this is not World's Apart, um, thankfully. <laughs> Where are we? At the merge. Uh, so, yeah, Aubrey, it could be a read effect where she was completely invisible or very invisible, and then the last few weeks they build her up so it's more of an impact. And the other thing is a lot of big characters have gone now. Alicia, um, Peter, um, Liz was getting a fair, fairly amount of airtime, Anna. So there is more room for these bigger characters, which is another possible explanation for... Nick and Aubrey suddenly being like the two main characters of the season. Um, but how does this go for you? That Nick currently has the second tied for second most confessionals of this season right now. And it's doesn't almost, that just blow your mind? It's off one episode. That's the crazy thing. Uh, he got how, eleven this week. What's his total for the whole season? Uh. I don't have it right in front of me, but I believe his total is 23 along with Jason. Okay. And the most is Ty. If anything, I think what that tells me is how unimportant confessionals are. Because if Nick had 12 confessionals prior to this, then I slept through every single one of them. Because I have no <laughs> recollection of him doing or saying anything before well, this Well, I episode. guess last week he had a fair bit with that basketball stuff. but Yeah, a couple, um, yeah. Before that, though. How many but does the Michelle other... have? That's my question. <laughs> uh, well, I think she is up there as well. She's not quite, but she's above a lot of other people, though. Um, I don't have it in front of me, but I'll try and get it up. Um, but one thing you do have to keep in mind is that Andrew Savage got 11 confessionals in the merge episode of Survivor Second Chance. Mm-hmm. Um so it doesn't really mean anything. It could potentially mean something. Um, Michelle, as of last week, had 13. That's way was, more than I thought. That was as of last week, and then this week she got... Oh, I'll get it. Um, but Nick, I'm saying it now, and feel free to isolate this clip for when it does happen. Um, Michelle had three this week, so she's on 16. <laughs> um, which is just... And another kind of uh, one for reference is Julia, uh, some people's winner pick, currently doesn't have more confessionals than Kelly Wigglesworth finished on. Whoa. Um, <laughs> and Ariane was saying that there was no way Kelly Wigglesworth could win, so I'm saying there's no way Julia can win. Um, yeah, Nick got almost double Julia's total just in this episode. But Nick is an interesting... We've kind of talked about him... I'm calling it now. Isolate the clip. Nick is not the winner of Survivor. It's so wrong. I do not see that happening at all. But I wonder, is he getting the read effect? Or is it just a case of he never went to Tribal Council and now he is going to be a much bigger character and maybe he goes fifth or something and does Mm -hmm. play a major role in this season. But I'm calling it he won't win. Well... I mean, we talked about how the editors will hold back people for certain reasons, how the editors will all of a sudden blast them out there for certain reasons. There is also the possibility, like you just said, there are people where until they go to tribal, they give the camera nothing. And that could have just been Nick. Uh, Now that we're seeing him in the game, maybe if in episode one, Beauty had lost, we would have had Nick as our major character of the season. But because he never really had the chance, he's just 100% a game guy and he never had the chance... Now, all of a sudden, we're getting everything that he would have done the whole time. So it is just possible that he was never 
on camera doing anything and he wasn't engaging uh, the the producers or giving them anything to work with. And this is sort of him and his element. Um, I, I don't know if he could win or not. I mean, we talked about how there's never really been a winner who was this invisible heading into a merge, but there was a time in which we could say there was never somebody as invisible as uh, you know, Bob who would win a season or uh, Natalie Anderson. So there's a first time for everything on Survivor. Uh, I wouldn't rule it out just because he's received a favorable enough edit this week just in terms of how he views the game. As a character, he's getting the douche edit. Uh, as a player, I think he's getting... A downright brilliant edit because everything he's saying is completely on the nose um i mentioned last week how you know the things he said to michelle were actually right and i think this week the way that he's viewing everybody in the game and how things are going to play out he's nailing it uh whether or not that actually holds up i don't know because i don't think that there are allies out there for him to necessarily work with that'll carry him all the way to the end of the game Nick is fascinating because I feel like he has a lot of autonomy in the game, but he doesn't have much power in the game. Mm -hmm. Like, he could go brain, he could go beauty, no one's voting him out at the moment, maybe they'll latch onto him eventually, or he's a physical threat or something, but... Like he has the potential to go anywhere, and he he didn't get the worst edit this week in terms of like understanding the game and what's happening, but he knows about idols and mm -hmm. everyone wants to work with him. So even though I'm not a huge fan of his character, and I still don't think he's winning, and his pre-merge thing was just ridiculous, um, he does have a lot of, not sway, but a lot of chances in the game. I yeah, I mean, it's completely like you said, he doesn't have any power right now, and that's the thing that's holding him back. He could be one of these guys who just understands the game in and out and never gets the chance to do anything about it. I mean, I guess Neil could potentially be one of those people that now that's uh, happened with the medevac. But, um, yeah, I, I, I want to see the way things are going to shake up. And this w episode was teased from the previous week as everything's going to be shaken up. Everything's going to change. And unfortunately, because of a medevac situation, we didn't get to see where anything happened. Maybe that will make the next episode more exciting now that we've had a whole week to tease all these potential, you know, uh, outcomes for these alliances and vote outs and everything. And now we're actually going to get two episodes leading into what will happen next week. Maybe it'll just make it that much more satisfying. I think next week will be a good payoff, mm -hmm. no matter who's voted out, like... The medivac was the real wrinkle here. Um, interesting fact is Michelle and Nick are the two players in Survivor history to have gone the longest without going to Tribal Council. Because, because of the extended merge? Yeah, well, oh, yeah, because, uh, yeah, Neil was medivac and they never had to go pre-merge, so mm -hmm. they outlast Tandang and they outlast Joe and Keith from last season, so that's kind of interesting. Um let me just get it, get it out there what I'm going to say about Michelle now. Because <laughs> I don't know if we yeah, have any other it. reason to bring her up. Ugh. Go for it. Okay, so I, again, I keep going back to what I said last week, that the scene where she was like, yeah, Debbie wants to work with me. And Nick told her, which was the truth, saying, Debbie wants to work with everybody, basically. Where did Michelle get in her head this week? She's like, I'm in a good position on Chan Lo. Based on what? You never went to Tribal, and the only person who made an alliance with you made an alliance with everybody. Where does she get in her head? She was in such a solid position. Like, I don't think that she has any clue what she's doing out there. <laughs> I, I did, uh, yeah, laugh at that line. <laughs> the only thing I can think of is maybe the reason they trust in Nick so much is because there was a Brawn Beauty alliance that we just mm -hmm. didn't really see a lot of. But you're completely right. It's just she was talking about Debbie and that. And the other thing is, is, again, this could be the edit lying to us, but last week the big thing was it's Michelle could be going home because she completely screwed up the challenge. Mm -hmm. And, like, she was going to the water. Debbie was saying, don't drown yourself. <laughs> Which, again, people who are saying Michelle has not had anything negative about her, um, case in point right there. But yeah. anyway, that's another story. I don't think there's been anyone in this scene who hasn't had anything at least like at least not even negative unfavorable mm -hmm. um, maybe julia but has she been in the show though so um uh 
yeah. I think Michelle, she's a lot of people's winner pick. No. And... Oh, no. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Maybe it could happen. Uh, I don't no, know. No, it can't. She's not my winner pick. Um, it's just, yeah. But she has had a bit of a spike in edit. But again, this could be just... The other thing, again, we don't want to go on and on here, but if you think of all six pre-merge boots, um, six, seven, seven pre-merge boots, um, all of them, maybe not Caleb because of just the way it went down, but all of them really had, like, fulfilled storylines and we got to know them and they had a whole complete package, I feel like. Like, Jenny, her two arc, like, we really got a lot of Jenny in that second one. Liz was a huge prominent character in the first three. Alicia, I don't need to get into. Peter, I don't need to get into. Anna, I don't need to get into. These were like, we felt like we knew these people. So maybe that's the spike of Aubrey and Nick and Michelle and all these, that because the pre-mergers, they were, did a really good job at telling their story, that they want to keep that up with the merge. Yeah. I'm not sure. Um We'll just briefly talk about the challenge. It was typical merge, holding balls on the stick. Uh, I love Jeff Probes. He's doing it so obviously now. He, like, he was even laughing at himself. Like, what was it? Like, Nick's balls are dancing all over the place or something. <laughs> and Ty's balls are being squashed together. That's never a good thing. Um, and I think Nick was even laughing during that. Um, this is Nick like, won the. Let, let's be honest. Jeff with balls is like Ben with <laughs> fart noises. It's so immature, <laughs> yes. but it will make him laugh every single time. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but Nick won. Ty second. Uh, I was impressed with Ty and Julia. Um, so yeah, boring challenge. It's kind. Of, this is se- episode seven. We're halfway through the season. I'm kind of upset that this will be the last episode we don't have a reward challenge in. We've done really good this season because I hate reward challenges. Mm -hmm. This season we've only had them in two of the seven, which I don't know if that's a record. It probably is. Um, (laughs) So that's going to be broken. They're going to have one every week now until the final, I reckon. Um, But who knows if we have another medivac that might change it up. We could just make the merges like, here are some Band-Aids, here's some antiseptic. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Give them stuff they really need. <laughs> <laughs> well, do you think they're going to up the rewards now because everyone is so beaten up and maybe not giving the best television? Uh, you know, I'm starting to think that because, I mean, like I was saying, this season is probably just a result of Guatemala factor or whatever, which really can go back to, if you want to look at how the show handles it, look at the Australian Outback and what happened that one week where everybody was just dead in the fire I think it was the fire building challenge and Propes even said on camera there's something off with you guys and they made a way to fix it so yeah this will be the opportunity to start giving some people a boost um, because there's no way around it these people are not giving I think what they potentially could be giving on camera you get the odd person like Debbie or uh, Peter but even if you look at Debbie, I don't think Debbie's anywhere near where she was in episode two right now. I think that even Debbie's taken a hit. Um, so we had like the pre-challenge thing with all the people with a- injuries, Mount St. Neil or whatever mm-hmm. it was. Um, so we'll, we'll get to Neil, but we've been talking a lot about Aubrey, and Aubrey really has been a main character for the past two weeks, but can are we not going to still can we rule her out completely is there still a chance that she could be a medivac because we had the episode one haven't you ever met a neat person I just want you to get to know the real me <laughs> kind of thing um a bit of moniker in there but and then we also had this week with her like her thing on her leg so can we rule her out at this point on She's still a potential candidate. Uh, I-, I joked last week that every time Joe took a bump, it was like, the old guy's going to get medevaced. But honestly, this episode has set it up so that anytime anything happens to a person, they're a potential medevac. And I- That's what I thought that scene was, where they were all comparing, okay, well, I have this, I have this. I thought it was just the editors having fun with us saying, well, guess what? Anybody can be a medevac, so you're not going to guess it. Um there's some who are definitely more plausible than others. I think that Ty is now ruled out unless something happens. Uh, yeah, he's not getting ready. Yeah, but Aubrey, uh, 
I mean, if you're looking at the scale of the injuries, and I guarantee there were more people who were looked at in this episode. They just decided to show us those four as like a progression. Okay, this one's okay. This one's okay. This one needs a little bit of work. She's the one who still needs a bit of work, and they said they'll be keeping an eye on it. So, and they maybe didn't even look at Neil last. Either. Yeah, exactly. Neil could have been right in the middle of it, for all we know. Uh, that's just the way they added it together. But you do have to look at it and say, well, they chose to show Aubrey and say, we're going to keep an eye on it. So if anybody, I think if, oh, yeah. the only way we can speculate at this week uh, or after this week, the only way we can speculate is to say, well, the person who they're most concerned about and with Neil gone, that probably is Aubrey. You have to imagine that with the main theme of this season, there has to be at least one more, surely, mm-hmm. right? Because there's but, never been three, has there? No, but again, we had it teased a record around a medevac, and the fact that we've had, what, at, by the merge, two medevac post vote out, I mean, it, it's possible that the, the rest of the medevacs are just going to be that, that they're not talking about what we're going to see on camera, that ultimately it's just going to be the amount of cast members. Maybe we don't oh, get any yeah. others, and it's just some of the jury members have to get medevaced. Which, well, which season yeah. was it where, where there was a... I don't even remember the season right now, but I remember the moment where one of the jury members wasn't there for a vote, and they're like, okay, well, they had something going on, or am I completely imagining that? I think you could be confusing your Bruce Kenner guys, potentially. Maybe. He may not have showed up for one of them because he needed to poo. I'm not yeah. sure. <laughs> <laughs> that might have been it. But if, if somebody but, out there listening... Uh, wants to wants to clue us in if that really happened. If somebody didn't show up one week and then they were back the next week, then let us know. Yeah, but I I have to think they're going to have at least one more surely. Um, mm-hmm. but anyway, in comes Doctor Rupert. <laughs> is he? <laughs> Doctor Rupert is in the house. <laughs> Could we have just had him bursting through a curtain like on Israel Rupert? <laughs> Yes. I brought some medical yeah. attention here. <laughs> <laughs> Antibiotics <laughs> for Laura and Rhea. You always have to do that. Up here, I'm Rupert. And then I'm down here. I'm uh, going to keep an eye on it. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it was great to have Dr. Rupert, a.k.a. Dr. Morpheus, I was thinking. Um, Morpheus? Yeah, didn't you think so? you got to go back and watch it, and you can just imagine it. Here, take this red pill. Um, it'll make you better. <laughs> go back and watch it. Dr. Rupert is so Dr. Morpheus. Um, <laughs> I'm, maybe I'm mixing my Matrix characters. And <laughs> Lawrence Fishburne. <laughs> Dr. Lawrence. Um, where was Dr. Joe? I thought Dr. Joe was the main doctor. Surely there's not a lot of things like, oh, Dr. Joe was busy. He's the survivor doctor. This is what they're supposed to be doing. Um, uh, he, he lost his medical license for something. We don't want to speculate, yeah. but we heard there were some nasty rumors on the internet. You can look them up. <laughs> well, maybe Dr. Joe was medivac That would have been a good twist. Yeah. Well, imagine if Dr. So- Rupert was... Now your apprentice, there, like, Rupert's going to take over. It's like, Rupert, <laughs> oh, the guy can't do anything right. Rupert's really like, they didn't have Dr. Joe, so they're just like, quick, grab that art guy. Here, <laughs> put this vest on. You're now a doctor. Uh, <laughs> all right, sitting, we're calling you Rupert. He's sitting there stirring a beef stew for that dinner that night, and they're like, oh, Shit. listen, you're our doctor right now. We need you on camera. <laughs> Neil was actually fine. It's just... All right, yeah, uh, guy you're I have to pick someone. He's, All right, I'll pick Neil to go. Then. I don't like his pants. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just want some ice cream. Let me go back to camp. Um, <laughs> we've cracked the code of Dr. Rupert now. <laughs> Dr. Rupert is the, the survivor production chef. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I think Dr. Rupert was there during the Caleb stuff as well, wasn't he? So that was a cool little fun thing to look out for. <coughs> I still miss Dr. Ramona, though. What happened mm. to her? Uh, um, <laughs> she's been demoted to chef. Yeah, she's the chef now. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, yeah, Dr. Rupert shows up, Dr. Morpheus, <laughs> and... We're, here we are trying to speculate who the medivac will be for the next medivac. Neil went home this week by a medivac. Wow. Um, 
uh, this is I, I mentioned how you know Caleb wasn't a major character, Neil wasn't a major character. Uh, uh, I'm not saying oh let's medevac the fun people, but <laughs> but <laughs> let's build the characters. Yeah, Doctor Root. Yeah, like let's care a little bit about them. I mean, this is kind of like Joe. He wasn't really a major character in Token Jeans, and I don't know. Um, I think it, it was unpredictable. I didn't see it coming, mostly because the whole story was built up about uh, you know, it, we're going to take out Neil or Aubrey. And again, I think that's all to fool the audience, but I think that's going to make this episode on a rewatch seem like a huge letdown because you've been built up to be excited for something that didn't happen. And I got to say, I mean, we've seen a lot of players who were disappointed when they weren't voted out. Niels has to be the most authentic, the way he sort of broke down. Yeah. I don't know if I've ever seen any player that distraught over what happened to them. Shema, he was devastated. He had to go. <laughs> Colton was devastated for about two seconds. No, no, don't pull me. Okay. But if you have to just do it. <laughs> uh, yeah. I, I can't say I'm, necessarily sad to see Neil go as a character even in terms of if I had to rank my favorite character down to my least favorite but it was it was sad that that's the way he had to go out and he was a fan and he was playing the game having the idol in his pocket um but yeah it was a sad medivac I think um and I wish it didn't like if he had to go I wouldn't be upset if he was the vote out this week but I would rather it be a vote out rather than a medivac from a thing that's just a little thing on his knee, not even like a Caleb thing. Um, so that kind of sucked for Neil. Can we Shh. say, though, like, remember we did the ranking... You remember that time we did the rankings cast for 34 hours? <laughs> <laughs> but when we Try did the rankings to. cast, uh, remember when we brought up Nick uh, from Panama? And how Ooh. most of us were like... Exactly, most of us were like... Yeah, you know, I have him ranked somewhere in here, but I still am having trouble remembering. Is Neil the most forgettable merge boot since Nick? Can he top Nick for most forgettable merge boot? Oh, yeah, Nick was a merge boot. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> um, there has been some clunkers in there, but a lot of the time they are the big characters, the Joshes and the Sarahs and stuff like that. Um Alina? Michael Snow was a merge boot. <laughs> oh, wait, no, Alina Michael Snow was. wasn't. Corinne was a merge boot, sorry. Um, oh, yeah. yeah, Alina's up there. I like Alina, but she's not the most memorable yeah. person out there. Um, yeah, One World, who was that? Was that Michael Jefferson? Uh, oh, Guatemala, Brandon. <laughs> There's a major player. Oh, I like Brandon. <laughs> but, I mean, let's be honest. There are a lot of these forgettable merge boots, when, and the merge is considered to be this is where the game really starts. And a lot of these people are just completely insignificant. And I, I, I actually think the sad thing is because I actually, in the first few episodes, I was doing nothing but criticize Neil for being so boring. But the few moments we had of him, I had hope of him being really fun. And I just don't think we ever got there. So unfortunately, I think he does kind of fit into the Nick category or the branding category. He's just, he's never going to be remembered. My vote's think. Michael Jefferson. I think he's the most forgettable. Yeah, <laughs> that's fair enough. <laughs> um, We'd love to have yeah. him on the show, though. We know that. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> For the numbers we do, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> to complete a season. Yeah, I guess that's one reason. Uh, yeah, I don't know if he'll go down as the most forgettable man. I think people still remember him, maybe because he got an idol, that will help. But I feel like we were robbed of a potential character here, and that could have been early departure. It could have been uh, bad editing because they didn't want to set up a big character who goes. Um, so I wasn't the massive Neil fan, but I don't think he's going to be the ultimate most forgettable. Mm. Um <sighs> I was, he actually tweeted about this, um, because a lot of people say, why didn't you give the idol to Aubrey? Um, that's a good question. And he act, well, he actually had an interesting tweet that I, I really excited for like exit interviews now. He said, um, I didn't want to give an idol to someone who told me they would slip my throat the night before. So maybe <laughs> Neil and Aubrey weren't even together. Um, 
And she did, did she call him like an arsehole or a son of a bitch or something at the end for not giving the idol yeah, up? Yeah, she something. had something to say. It, so, I was assuming that maybe you can't, you know, because we've well, never really seen that. But yeah, I mean. Colton was allowed to. Well, <laughs> Colton and his medevac. <laughs> But we did later learn that Colton wanted to give it to Jay, but because Jay was on the other tribe, yeah, he couldn't. Um, so you have to assume they haven't changed the rules since One World. Hey, I mean, more power to him for not doing it because it makes the game a little bit more unpredictable. It makes people have to work harder. So I'm that okay with him. Doesn't though, because the thing I'm worried about now is if Ty and Jason are together, they've kind of got a Terry Deets, Yuquan Idol almost, if they choose to use it. Ty might not choose to use it with mm-hmm. Jason. And then there's no de- defense on the other side. That's the one thing I'm kind of worried about. They've got the god idol now. Yeah. Which, again, that ultimately just comes down to will they play it, but I do find it interesting the way that Jason's been set up the last couple of weeks with people just not liking him. We saw how badly Peter rubbed Ty the wrong way. You know, in like the mango tree kind of way. <laughs> but, uh... <laughs> I think that maybe we're getting a setup for the same thing, that Ty just won't want to work with Jason. Um, I think you mentioned Peter in there. Uh, if you want some more entertainment, go on and read Peter's Twitter, because he gave some medical uh, thoughts on the, the Medivac. Uh, and why wasn't Peter there to help Neil? Why wasn't Peter there to break yeah. off his boil? He should not have gone on the pre-jury holiday trip. He should have went over there and <laughs> came back to camp and saved Neil. What a horrible doctor. He will never give to charity. <laughs> and what's he doing about Noah's sore throat right now? Come on. What's Peter ever done for you? <laughs> Why isn't he helping me? Um, but, yeah, that would have been interesting, Peter, there as the doctor with Dr. Rupert there. Um, there's a sitcom, Rupert and Peter. But he did mention that he thought that like Dr. Rupert said that uh, in hours, Neil's knee could be completely destroyed. And Peter said that that wouldn't be the case. So maybe Dr. Rupert is the chef. We've cracked the code. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, any final departing thoughts on Neil just quickly before we get into these final questions? Um, if we had, I, I think we talked about him more than he was shown on screen this entire season. So I'm all out of ideas. You know, every week people are talking about this, but there is talks again of Neil coming back. Uh, uh, I'm not Neil's on not the coming back. Neil coming back. Um, yeah. yeah, it's not happening. He has the medivac story, but that's the thing with Caleb. His only story really is he was medivac. Um, but anyway, uh, let's get into some of these final questions. I'm sure we probably missed some aspects of this merge, but. There's so much to talk about, and next week will kind of be Merge Part 2. But who is your tip to win after the Merge? Normally a pretty critical episode. It's tough because all the people that I would have predicted off the first half of the season, I don't think the show did any favor for this week. Um, so um, I'm just going to repeat what I said last week, I think, Debbie. If that is what I'm I said just... last week, I don't remember. <laughs> I'm just going to go with a stock standard Sydney. However, I fear that if her edit doesn't start to pick up, that she's going to go off my radar because people were quite high on her, but for the past few weeks, she's been kind of quiet. So mm-hmm. I'll cautiously say Sydney, but I think the next two weeks or three weeks will be critical on whether or not she actually has a chance. Um, Dark Horse. Uh, you know, we haven't seen her for a few weeks, but she's one of those few people that we still haven't seen anything negative about, so I'm going to go with Sydney. I think that's what I said in one of the past episodes. <laughs> I'm going to go with, and again, it's not going to happen, but if Ty can make it to the end, he's got the jury votes. It's just a matter of, will anyone let him get there? Mm-hmm. Um, who is... The next to go. Aubrey. Wow. <laughs> Without hesitation. Um, I just wonder if something will shift up next week or not. Um, I wouldn't disagree with your Aubrey thing, but I'll say completely unexpectedly say Nick. Maybe they're setting up a demise sooner rather than later. 
Um, who who played the most like you this week? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. Uh, let me see. Probably Neil, because I tend to let injuries go a little bit too far. I've taken myself out of commission this week with something like that. So <laughs> I'm going to go with Neil. I would be the guy who would have something and I'd just be like, no, no, it's fine. Okay, you're going to lose your leg. Oh, I'll be all right. It's okay. <laughs> End up losing my leg or getting medevac. So I'm going with Neil. We know that from the story that you rode two hours in the blazing sun. Yeah, that's one, right. One evening exhausted. for a barbie. Yeah. I'm really <laughs> dumb when it comes to making myself ill, making myself injured. I'm really dumb. Yeah, <laughs> that's where the editing is going to end. Period. Here. I'm really dumb. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll just cut. If I was bad and had these wonderful editing skills, I could just cut. So you just say, I'm really dumb. Yeah, <laughs> that's what he would. He just put it on a loop, me and you back and forth. I'm really dumb. I'm really dumb. I'm really dumb. I'm really dumb. <laughs> um, I'm going to go with Debbie. Because I would try to make an alliance and think, oh, I'm doing so well with this strategy <laughs> thing. I'm just the best at this game. And then people are talking about on their back, uh, what was that? And so I'd be, and I'd get really anxious and paranoid. So, I'm like, yeah, you're in the alliance. All right, good. We, we can trust you. All right. That's um, why there were six other Oz lists this week that were under the impression they were doing the Oz Topsy because no one just went, I really like you, Ivan. I think you're on the Oz Topsy this week. Gemma, I want you on the Oz Topsy this week. <laughs> Yeah. Jared, you're um, on the Oztopsy. <laughs> I'm Debbie. We really do need to get some other people on the Oztopsy. Plus, every now you're and a part time model, too. Well, that's true. <laughs> and a, what is a, a caretaker to nuns as well. Um, are you <coughs> a brain, a brawn, a beauty, or a merge? Um, I... A Dara. We didn't get to that. Why did they name their tribe after someone from Pearl Island? Because they were looking for somebody that would adequately uh, describe half the characters on the season being totally boring and non-existent <laughs> Maybe Dr. On the show. Rupert came in and he's like, oh, I remember someone called Dara. I remember Dara. <laughs> yeah, no, oh, we can call it that. They had no explanation. I wonder what Dara means. Yeah. Uh, uh, Dara, Dara means uh, like infected, infected boil or something like that. So <laughs> I would be a Dara member. <laughs> Uh, we didn't really we did touch on it and we're not going to go into it but I did find this fascinating that this merge was very brains versus brawns versus beauty um, like you look at the Kagiyan merge and that was kind of uh, that was more like Soliontu versus Apari yeah. with kind of a bit of brawn with the Sarah storyline this was completely just brains versus brawns versus beauty um but yeah, I'm looking forward to next week. Uh, I think it's going to be a fun one. Hopefully, the next medivac, if there is one, isn't next week because that would be a real downer. Um, but I think it should be a good conclusion to this first episode. And yeah, that's it for the week. It wasn't my favourite one, but there was still a lot to break down and a lot to talk about. And this season is quite unpredictable, and I'm looking forward to seeing how this merge does turn out. Hopefully, the quality stays up. Um, but, yeah, Colin, thanks for being me. Yeah, and I'm going to give a thank you and a shout-out to somebody. Uh, this last episode, we talked about tuna salad on apples. And oh, one of yes. our listeners, Toggy Ranger, accepted the challenge, ate it, tweeted That's us a picture. Sweet. I'm sure he enjoyed it. Um, I don't know what he's well, talking about. Well, we never he's... heard back from him again. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe, <you died. laughs> Maybe he was medevaced after having tuna salad on apples. But, <laughs> yeah, big shout-out to Toggy Ranger, who... Uh, yeah, that was yeah, uh, accepted the challenge, and maybe we'll come up with something else for him to eat. Maybe we'll have a challenge for the end of the season, uh, something else you have to try. We'll think about all our weird food combos. Yeah, we're just going to keep going each week with Targi Ranger until we eventually kill him with something. That's right. Next week you have to try tuna salad on bananas, and then if you enjoy that, we'll have a third one for you, and eventually you will become an Oslet by doing this. <laughs> That's the new initiation. But yeah, that was cool. Um we, yeah, we never found out if he really enjoyed it or not. So. <laughs> but he tried it. Um, and it looks so. good in his picture. If anybody wants to look up Toggy Ranger, look at his picture. Yeah. Looks delicious. Give, it, give him a retoot. It doesn't look delicious. A retoot? <laughs> Did you say retoot? I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs>
Um, <laughs> tuna <laughs> salad on apples, not like bean dip on apples. Now that would be good. I like bean, bean dip, dip on apples. <laughs> you know, I do have another one. I don't know if anybody can get this. Oh, but here's, no. And it always involves apples. There is a mango curry dip that you can get. And having that on apples is just as good as tuna salad. Oh. This is the apple <laughs> challenge of the week. Mango, if you can find... <laughs> My sister sells this stuff. It's called Epicure, if anybody knows it. Mango curry Epicure dip on <laughs> apples. Delicious. Oh, that, that mango dip, oh, that sounds quite good. <laughs> <laughs> you had to ruin it with the apples again. Try it well, on apples. Anything would, goes good on apples. You really must have something against apples <laughs> if you're just mutilating them like this. <laughs> but, yeah, try, what was that? Bean, no, it wasn't bean, it was... Magic mango carrot. curry, mango, mango curry dip on apples. Yeah, all right, there you go, doggy <laughs> ranger. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm excited to see the, what the finale apple challenge is going to be. Um, <laughs> once I had fried apples with sausages in a hot dog bun. Come on, that's disgusting. What's wrong with you? <laughs> <laughs> that's my apple challenge. <laughs> Fried apples with sausages and hot dog buns. We've just given Toggy Ranger like about, <laughs> well, at least a whole day's worth of meals to try here. <laughs> yeah, you better buy a big bag of apples. <laughs> but yeah, if anyone else wants to try out the apple challenge, we'll have a prize for you. Um, and by having a prize, I mean it's 40 minutes away until April the 1st, so we, there is no prize. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> that's your fault for doing the challenge, <laughs> thinking there will be a prize. <laughs> Maybe that is an April Fool's joke, and this mango curry thing is actually going to kill him. Or yeah, <laughs> we're going to get him medevac from watching the rest of the season. We're talking about a lot of uh, killing Taki. <laughs> <laughs> Let's wrap this one. This has become a very morbid episode. Suddenly, I blame Doctor Rupert <laughs> and tuna salad apples. Um, yeah, like, subscribe, subscribe. subscribe. Uh, tune in uh, <laughs> do all those things uh, Twitter, Facebook tweet us your Apple photos we'll retweet them um, <laughs> and again we're really enjoying the feedback we do read the feedback so send the feedback um, even if the feedback is negative I'll still read it and I may respond to it I don't know um, and the Oz show should be coming up we always like to get a bunch of different Oz on the line and stay tuned for Ben winning Survivor Australia also being at Reality Rally. There should be some videos up of that. We had a few of these, so that should be good. Um, and yeah, bring on episode 8 of Survivor Co Wrong. Uh, my name has been Noah, being Ben. Um, and until next time, we'll speak to you next time. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we we'll to you next time on the train. Alright, enjoy those cheetah salads.